Hey everybody, today we have a usable mixed media art tutorial. You can do the same exact thing in an art journal or on a canvas. Hi, I'm Creative Katie, Karen Virgil. Welcome to my channel. So I'm going to do this on a six by six TCW folded card base. I'm taping off the back side and I'm putting a piece of paper on, on that just so I don't get any of the color or medium on that back part, just to keep it neat. Now to break the page, I'm just doing some text stamping and some swirls and some shapes that remind me of starfish because I know I'm going to put a starfish on this card. I just wanna build some interest into the background. Now, in my particular case, a lot of this stamping that I'm doing now doesn't show up in the final layers, but that's okay. So I'm going to use some aquas, some light blues, some blue greens, ocean colors. I'm mixing it with one makeup sponge straight onto the paper. Now this card surface was not gessoed. So the blending is a little bit more difficult to blend, but not bad. Now about the card base, while I'm using TCW card base here, you could use mixed media paper. If you're using watercolor paper, that will all work as well. So don't worry so much about the substrate. You do you, you do what you have. I'm showing you an alternative. So I'm mixing the blues, the greens. My goal here is to get C colors. I'm adding a little bit of white gesso in there to make it kind of frosty kind of looking and build in more variation. What I don't want is it to look flat, one tone. So now I'm grabbing some DIY mark makers and good old bubble wrap. What works better for C bubbles than bubble wrap? So I'm going to take some white acrylic paint. I'm spreading it on the glass mat. There you can see it. Pressing that in and just adding some bubbles with the white. And I believe I come back in and I do the same with a darker Prussian blue. I had some turquoise on there and there just wasn't enough. So I'm coming back and I'm adding the same colors that were in the background, I'm adding here. Now this is a shelf liner. Adding some Prussian blue. And this makes little dots. Quick, easy, sea themed background. Now I'm going to use this Sea Creatures stencil. This is the 12 by 12 one. I'm going to use this starfish and I'm going to have it hanging off the edge. So I'm taping this down because I'm going to be using stencil butters which are similar to modeling paste, a little thinner, but they have this amazing sheen. But before I get to that, I am doing kind of a two-step stencil process here. I'm stenciling with white because I want the shape of the starfish. Now I'm going to get the same white paint and I'm going to paint the entire starfish solid white. This is so when I do the stencil butter, I have a white background to it as opposed to the aqua and blues peeking through. It just gives a slightly different look. I could have painted this all a dark navy and then did the stencil butters that you're going to see and that will give again a different look. This is one way you can deal with 
stencils that are focal images. So I'm just getting this, I want it fairly opaque. I placed the starfish off the page because I think it looks better like that, but I also want to put sediment, a sentiment on it. Now this starfish, real live starfish, we saw in our recent trip to Tofino. And look at those colors. So I grabbed two stencil butters. This is fuchsia and marigold. And then with the white that I put in the background. Now that was the inspiration for this page. So I'm putting the stencil back in place, taping it down, which is always a good idea when you're using modeling paste or stencil butters, especially if you're doing that and it's a focal image because you want it a little bit more precise. If I'm doing stenciling for a background, I don't really care so much if it's so perfect, but I want this pretty good. I want to eliminate the options. So I have the two stencil butters and I'm gonna grab a palette knife and apply them to it. There's gonna be some mixing where they're gonna make more of that corally color. Some are gonna be more pink. Now I warn you, the pictures at the end, the colors are somewhat distorted, but it very much looked like the picture from my inspiration picture. Now these stencil butters have this amazing shine and shimmer. Now I'm gonna clean my stencil and let it dry. Now here's an alternative. If you don't wanna use modeling paste or st use stencil butters, you can get a gel print or paint a paper, painty paper that is those colors. And here I'm just stenciling with white over top And I would cut that out and get. So there we go. It looks very close to my inspiration picture. Now I wanted to add a little interest to the card. And I'm going to use this Waves stencil from the Crafters Workshop. This is one of their cake and cookie stencils. I'm going to use it to make a bit of a border design element on the page. I'm taping off the end because I don't want to inadvertently get some stencil, some of paint onto the card. And I'm going to stencil with the darkest color, my Prussian blue. I did move the stencil down and I'm getting the bottom of the page and I apologize. And now I want to do some across the top, but I'm going to chat, change it up a little bit and just have two of the waves, not three like the side. Took a little bit of figuring out exactly what I wanted to do, but it's all worth it in the end. Now I'm edging it with the Prussian blue on the makeup sponge. Now I want to stamp a sentiment on here and I'm using my little wooden alphabet stamps, but because I really wanna make sure that it stands out and the background's a little busy, I'm just taking a makeup sponge with some white gesso and just whiting out the back, the pattern a little bit, just to hedge the bets. Now when I 
stamp, I always stamp with archival paint on paper and then I can move it around and figure out exactly where I want to stamp them and if there's enough room. And then I stamp into black acrylic paint and place it where I've additioned the archival stamping. I like using the the black paint because if you do make a mistake, because everything underneath here is dry and permanent, I can wipe it off, which you really can't do with archival ink. Like there, I put the H a little too high. I can grab a baby wipe and then I stamp it exactly in the same place. So, you know, third time's the charm. You can see how that one's not so much on the white and you lose a little bit of the H, which is why I wanted that white halo underneath the letters. I do clean the stamps. I have that baby wipe in my hand and I clean the stamps right after I stamp with them to keep them in working order. So I'm stamping the sentiment, wish upon a star. As I said at the beginning, you can make this exact thing on a art journal page, on a canvas. If you're if it's bigger than the six by six, you may want to layer up a couple starfish. Do a combination of some with modeling paste, some with collage papers, or some with just stenciling. Now I'm using white acrylic paint, the floating acrylic technique of shading, and I'm just going around the starfish just to bring it out a little bit more. Normally, yes, I've been I've done a lot of black, but I didn't want black here. I could have used blue, Prussian blue, but I'm really liking the effect of the using white and getting that halo frosty kind of look. I turn my project, whatever works easier for me to access it. And then I'm doing the same all around the edge. And the combination of having the Prussian blue there that I did with the makeup sponge, and now this shading with white, just really looks good in my mind. If I want it more white, I wait for it to dry and then I come back and do another layer. It's build it up slowly. It's easy to add more. It's not so easy to take off. The colors that you see there, those are the true colors. Now I wanted to add a little more detail, so I grabbed my white Posca pen and I'm adding some dots on that Prussian blue stenciling with the wave stencil. Quick, easy way to change it up and bump up the base of the stencil. Remember, the stencil is just the beginning. Use it as a jump off base to add your own personal touches. I did the one curve of the wave, thinking that might be enough, and then I decide I want more. I've never been a doodler, but lately I'm really reaching for, for my Posca pens, black or white, and just adding that little bit of doodling, and I'm really liking the effect. So I hope you give it a try, even if you've tried it before. I'm giving that a good dry and I heated up the masking tape, the painter's tape, and it comes off without ripping off any paper. Now I just want to edge this. I'm just going to go around and draw a line with my black Posca pen all the way around the edge, which really shows up because of the white that's there.
Now, I could be done, but I like to personalize the envelopes, so I'm going to use the stencil butters again. I'm going to use this starfish stamp and stamp into the stencil butters. Now I'm going to overlap and I don't want to get some, so I'm just going to find a piece of paper and slip it under there so I don't get it on the rest of the envelope. And I'm just going to stamp with some pink, some of that fuchsia color, and then some of the orange. So you can stencil with the stencil butters. They work well for stamping as well. You can push them through with your fingers. Check out my other videos where I use the stencil butters. They're a great versatile product. Clean your stamps and stencils after you use stencil butters, just like modeling paste. So let's do a recap of this mixed media card. I started with the inspiration was one of my own photos from a recent trip, the starfish. I did some stamping on the background. I used, I applied color in blues and greens using the block and blend technique, wet on wet. And I used some DIY mark making tools, the bubble wrap and the shelf liner. I put the stencil butters, similar to modeling paste, through the stencil. And I stenciled, used the stencil to create a border or design element on the card. I shaded with white around the starfish on the, to bring out the focal image. And I edged the page in the same way. I stamped the sentiment with acrylic paint. <clears throat> and then I did some doodling with my Posca pens on top of the stenciling. And then I stamped with, not thick gesso this time, but I don't have a card, with the stencil butters to get shine and texture on the envelope to make a match set. Thank you so much for joining me. Give me a thumbs up. Ask me a question. If you give this a try, I'd love to see it. Come and post it in my Facebook group. Bye for now.